Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at Readwise, specifically Readwise and its Obsidian uh, integration, because it's really cool. Well, I'll tell you a disclaimer, they actually gave this to me, they gave me my Readwise account, because um, I wasn't, I just wasn't going to have one before this. And when they gave it to me, and it honestly, it created instant value for me within a couple days. So I think that I was missing out before. So before we get into the uh, this video, I want to talk about a few ways to support the channel. You can become a member via YouTube. Uh, you'll find all that information just below the video. You can also do stuff like super thanks, which is just thanks for the video. It was helpful. Um, and you can take one of my courses on Skillshare. You'll find all the links to those below. You are probably interested in the one on Zettelcast and called Getting Started with Zettelcast. And there'll be a link directly below that. And if you just go to curtismichael.ca slash Skillshare, that will, you know, take you to Skillshare. You can sign up and I get some affiliate money from that. So, Let's dive into Readwise and see what it can do with your Kindle highlights, because that's, that's at least why I'm using. It has some other features, but I'm using Kindle. So what is Readwise? Readwise is a service that helps sync your Kindle highlights. So when I come in here, you can see I have 190 books in here from Kindle. I had to hook it up to my Amazon account. You can see here's all the books that I have read. Um, yeah, all the books that I have read about anything over the number of years. So the big thing with this is that while I normally read paper books now, I actually find it hard to read on screen often, except for my Kindle. My Kindle's not too bad, but I find it hard to read on screen. Um, I still have 190 books that I've read uh, and taken notes on, taken highlights on, right? In Profit First, I have 33 highlights. So I have all of these that are just not in my Obsidian system unless I manually go back and do something about it. So that was one of the big things as I went, as I looked at Readwise and I said, hey, I, don't, I don't have these notes yet unless I do it and I'm never gonna get to it, to be honest. It's gonna take so long. I'm just never gonna get to it. So instead, we can go to Obsidian. And one of the things that paid off like immediately for me, uh, I think I probably hooked this up on a Friday and on Saturday, uh, a couple weeks ago, I was out with my wife for the weekend in Vancouver and I was reading a book, you can see my notes on this side called The Devil's Curve. I should have it beside me still, I'm just finishing it off. The Devil's Curve, which is about a highway in Peru and where a bunch of indigenous people were murdered because they didn't want the, didn't want the uh, land um, to be destroyed. That they live on. So as I was reading that on page 27, 28, I read about the banana massacre. And I started off saying, I wonder if this lines up with anything in the fish that ate the whale, um, which is about banana plantations. And then I thought, wait, 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 I actually have notes on this, don't I? Um, because Readwise synced it. And then over on this side, you can see my notes that it synced. And right here where I said, also note that the Zamuri, uh, Samuel Zamuri is the banana guy in this other book all about him and about his wild adventures, stuff like you can't have a bridge between your banana plantation and the road. And he says, I don't have a bridge. I have two really, really long docks. And you know, there's 30, 20 feet in the middle that somehow you could put floating things between for trucks to drive across, but it wasn't really a bridge. It was just two docks. And you did buying warships, stuff like that, funding government overthrow in the thirties. So anyway, uh, the Banana Massacre, and I started making connections, right? The Banana Massacre, which is basically um, indigenous land claims are being delegitimized for colonial claims. That's pretty common. I've read in many books where indigenous First Nations people of any country, their uses of land are set up as just not being the right use because they're not colonial white person uses. So I made that connection right away. Uh, and then I even went in and if we go to the banana massacre, started like diving into it, right? Um, United Fruit, the U.S. State Department made more tags in there, more about Columbia, the Devil's Curve, right? And made a highlight or a note in there. Um, yeah, talks about white conceit as well. And, you know, reference to other books, Words Have a Past and the Inconvenient Indian. And then this also led me to believe, hey, you know, I've got a lot of stuff here. Like I keep finding all these things. So what about me doing some other YouTube cell content? Uh, some explainer videos. I don't have much past that yet. So if you're expecting them immediately, it's not going to happen. And this is one thing I could talk about. I could talk about the banana massacre or I could talk about that whole note where I'm talking about 
how indigenous land claims are just put to the side. And I could even show, well, I didn't even think about this till just now, even show like here it happened in the 30s, here it happened, and here is how it's happening now, right? Um, we could talk about the some of the pipelines that are going through um, in Canada and how, even relating to a book, okay, I just recorded this video, even relating how to the color of law, how if the police I just reviewed this, so there'll be a video link above all of this, this video comes out before the review, so the link will not be active till Friday. Friday, after this, this video you're watching comes out. That one basically says if federal institutions are, um, like police, are harassing Indigenous, First Nations, uh, Black people, African Americans, then the federal government is basically saying racism is okay. And we are currently seeing that at, like, Ferry Creek, other stuff in Canada where federal uh, officers are ignoring the law, uh, arresting journalists, throwing journalists out, even though they've been told you can't do that. Um, they are, you know, beating up people at Ferry Creek. And they are, and, and by the fact, like, they are supporting racism right there. And the federal government, um, and ultimately the people of Canada are supporting racism because of that. Yeah, because if, if they really weren't, then they would be stopping this. We would be having a big protest, and we're not. In part because a lot of people just think, that's oh, just natives, whatever. So, some things on the setup. So, if you start off this account, and I have an affiliate link, if you go to readwise.io slash Curtis, uh, that should be it. Although I haven't got confirmation, so you look below, it'll have the actual link for sure. Um, that will give you double the normal trial time. So when you first start off, if you're in the trial, you'll get 10 books synced. And one thing, uh, that's how I started off and made some good connections. Then they actually set me up with an account. So one thing I found is I had to delete this folder books to get it to sync. And I had to go back through their entire sync process, which was really easy. It only took like 60 seconds to sync all these books again. Not hard. Um, it only works in Chrome. Uh, and if we go into Readwise Official, you just have to initiate sync. So there's some hookup stuff where you have to like sign into your account. You have to use Chrome for that. This does not run on your mobile device, so I cannot just do this with my uh, iPad only or with my iPhone only. I literally have to have um, a desktop version of Obsidian running for it to continue to sync. I can make more notes in here, um, and they'll just be appended as I'm going. Like I'm reading the Icarus Deception right now. And you can see I have highlights, highlights, and then it says new highlights added as of August 20th. New highlights added as of the 23rd. So it does sync and it will uh, append so i can actually go in here and like make other notes process this later really dig it and put it into zettelkasten and even if i read the book later on again totally then they'll just get appended in here and nothing that i've already done to the note um, from the obsidian end will be affected in any fashion and that's really it i think that this is an excellent service um, i think that it's pulled one of my pain points for dealing with um getting notes out of Kindle, uh, like the formatting out of notes. I actually looked at a shortcut uh, on iOS to do this once, and it was just pain in the butt. Like <laughs> just like parsing this terrible, terribleness. Um, another actually cool thing it really does I was, is, let me bring up Spark. So it actually goes through here and says, um, gives you some highlights, right? So I haven't looked at this yet. This is today's highlights. In other words, the reader himself must add something to the book to make it applicable in practice, right? How to Read a Book, Basic Income for Canadians by Evelyn I'll Forget. I reviewed this book a while ago, too. The 4-Hour Body, TEDx Marketing Formula. So I'll actually go through these and make some highlights. Um, what one came up recently? I've got over here. I don't have it on my second screen. One came up recently that basically said it was from Meet and Grow Rich, which is a book about uh, masterminds. And it basically said... The guy, the guy took some huge risk, spent all his money, went up to some conference, and then, look, I made all this money from it because I made good connections. And my thought was, yeah, okay, but, like, how many people did stuff like that and didn't do it, didn't make it? We're literally dealing with survivorship bias here, and we are dealing, I think we're conflating, and we often do in business books, dumbass luck, where, look, something just miraculously happened to me with actually good business sense because you, you don't do that. Like, it was just far too risky, and it was just dumbass luck that they came out with some deals. So that has how Readwise has been helpful. I have it set up to send me emails on my highlights weekly. 
because I don't want them every day because I'm just never going to get through it. And honestly, even weekly, I'll just delete some when I don't have time because that's what will happen. Anyway, if you like the video, then you can support it by going to readwise.io, uh, Curtis, Curtis, just Curtis, and uh, sign up. You'll get uh, an extension on the trial account, and I get some money for that uh, if you sign up. So it'd be awesome. Uh, you could become a YouTube member. You could do super thanks. You can take one of my courses on Skillshare, uh, which you'll find links to that all below. That's it. Oh, you're supposed to thumb up, like, subscribe, all that stuff, but keep your notifications off. You gotta go read a book. Go read a book. Anyway, have a good one. Thanks for watching. Try to behave yourselves today.